Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. And after we look at the pens, I'm going to share why it's been so hairy lately, but it's all good. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share some of what's been distracting me and uh, keeping me busy and making me forget about <laughs> pens in use a little bit. Um, all good, but maybe not forgivable, but all good. So stay tuned after the pens for that. So for now, let's take a look at some pens. All right, so these are the pens that I've been using throughout the week. From left to right, we have a Platinum 3776 with a music nib. This was supposed to be last week's pen video, but for reasons I'll get into at the end of this video, I kind of forgot about it. Um, made the video, edited the video, never uploaded it. Uh, Sailor Regulus. Um, Sailor Regulus brings up a good point in my video descriptions you're going to see three squirrels beside some pens that's not a ranking thing that's a note to me hey this pen this here pens due for a revisit so that's what that's all about revisiting them um these are survivor pens these are pens that i haven't reviewed in five or more years but i still own so so st actually this is one of my early more expensive pens uh, Lamy 2000, Sailor 1911 Standard. This is, I drew, just drew a complete blank. It's a Moon Man, I think. Luckily, I have this all written down. I just don't have it open. Oh, and my whole list of pens is out of order, so I'll have to fix that before I upload it. But anyway, this is a Moon Man M700. This is an inkless pen. I'll talk a little bit about that when I get to it. This is a Pelican M1000, Visconti Homo Sapiens, and a Visconti Mirage. As always, I'll be doing this writing sample in this Cognitive Surplus Theory Notebook. All right, so the first pen is this Platinum 3776. As I said, I did a rodeo about this pen. Uh, I compared it with the Sailor Music Nib. It was supposed to go up this past week. Videos made and everything, and for some reason it didn't go up. I uh, got distracted. So, uh, I'll to talk about what the distractions were here at the end of the video. But, anyway, I have uploaded the video now. So, it's prepared and scheduled to go up Wednesday morning. So this is a Platinum 3776 with a music nib. The ink in it is Lummy Turquoise, which is a very nice turquoise. Um, I'm not done using up turquoise inks yet, but I feel like when I am, from what I've seen so far, this is going to be the one I stick with. Just very nice, very reliable, works on a lot of different kinds of paper and a lot of different kinds of pens, and it looks good. My next pen is a Sailor Regulus. I just recently filmed, well, the writing sample, I guess, of this pen uh, for a revisit. This is a uh, very 70s looking. Uh, it's got sparkles in it, too. Let's see if you can see them. Yeah, on my camera, they show up better in the black. Very subtle sparkles. So all week, just so I can film the talking part, I've been keeping this as my everyday carry pen. It's definitely a fine, a Japanese fine. In other words, when I bring up the Lamy 2000 next, it's probably going to compare to that. The ink in it is very nice blue-black. It's one I happen to like a lot. Pilot blue-black. Not 
the showiest ink out there. This isn't one people load up in their pens to show off, but a good reliable ink. Um, some of those pilot inks have a bit of a smell like dissect the fluid they use to preserve animals for dissection, but in any case, I think it's a very nice color. And blue-black is good enough to be black, but has a little fun to it. Then we have the Lamy 2000, which is my usual companion. I probably should have cleaned it out while I was doing all this, but, uh, eh. So this is an extra fine nib, and you can see that it's very similar to the Sailor Regulus. The ink in this one is Omas Black. That's a discontinued ink I'm currently using. Uh, not, you know, when I use up this bottle, I'm not going to be sad. It'll just be a point of interest. Oh, there's one last bottle of Omas Black left in the world. Um, now that Omas has been somewhat re revived, maybe they'll start making their inks again. But I'm also told it's not really the same company and that the pens aren't the same. I haven't... <clears throat> I'm looking for the video that compares an original Omas pen to one of the new ones. Haven't seen it yet. I'd be interested to see that. Uh, now I want to ink up my Omas Ojiva. <laughs> This is a Sailor pen that I will be keeping. I like this one a lot. This is a Sailor 1911 Standard, so it's a little bit smaller. Wait till you see what ink's in it. Now, isn't that bright? So what is the ink? And what is this fantabulous nib? So the nib is a their Zoom nib. And the fantabulous ink in it is Sailor Gentle Apricot. Another ink that Sailor has discontinued. Is it my favorite orange? No. It's bright, cheerful, I like it. But, uh... You know, if I were to go for favorite oranges, it might be something like Diamine Autumn Oak. And so I just thought, well, since I like that one already, let's use up the ones you like less. This is bright and cheery, but not my bag. And we get the Moon Man M700. This is meant to sort of be like a Pelican M800. I'll, I'll have a little more to say about the Pelican M800 later. Uh, possibly also meant to remind you of the Parker Duo Fold. But anyway, that is definitely not a Moon Man nib in it. That's a Stipula T Flex nib. I had a, I bought a Stipula pen with a T flex nib in it, and it was awful. It wouldn't write. It was miserable. And I tried switching out the feed. I tried cleaning. I tried flossing. I tried all kinds of things. I could not get that bugger to write. Put this nib in this pen. Also have another one because somebody sent me a T flex nib saying, "Well, I bet it's just you got a bad nib." No, I got a bad pen. That thing, I cannot get any nib I put in it to work. I don't know what its problem is, but I'll never buy another one of those things. But anyway, uh, the other one that was sent to me, the other T-Flex nib, uh, is now in a Noodler's pen. Um, also doing very well. So one of the fun things about these... I can't remember if there's a T in that or not. Ah, let's go with one. What's the worst that could happen? 
I don't get attacked by my uh, viewers from the Netherlands if I misspell or mispronounce. Grunmart Smaragd. Green Grocer's Market. So, it's a nice dark green. I like it. I, uh... Favorite green? Probably not, but a nice green. I'll have a moment of sadness when I use up the bottle. Not a long moment, but a moment. So now we're going to do something a little different. This is... I don't know the brand. I don't even remember where I got it from. Was it given to me? Did I buy it? I don't know. This is the only branding on it. Means absolutely nothing to me. But I'd like to do a video on this one of these days. I need to figure out exactly how they use, they work. My understanding is the metal tip oxidizes the paper. But I was using this as a pencil this past week because, uh, oh, on top of everything I'm going to list later, uh, my school also hosted Math Meet for grades 9 through, no, sorry, grades 4 through 8 in uh, for 14 surrounding schools from two different states. I don't think anybody from Montana came over. Um, I was asked to evaluate the 7th and 8th grade tests. So I was doing that with, you know, with my number two pencils. And then I saw this and I thought, I've never used that really. So I started using this. As you can see, hopefully you can see, it's, it's like a very light pencil. Uh, apparently somehow it oxidizes the paper. doesn't smear like pencil wood um, as far as erasing it actually does erase so make of that what you will so I want to be sure of the chemistry behind how they work but apparently this isn't going to run out at any point it feels like a super laggy pencil but Anyway, a little something different for you. Now back to our normal pens. <laughs> so I was, uh, I popped into Hemingway Jones's live stream this week, which I haven't usually been able to do that thanks to stuff I'm going to talk about at the end of the video, but this week I... I was able to, in a while, doing other things, so I wasn't giving him my full attention. But one thing he brought up is he's considering buying a Pelican M1000 or Pelican M800. I, a lot of people suggested the Pelican M1, or sorry, M800. I suggested this because, you know, my thing with the Pelican M800 is it's a good pen. And that's all it is. This is also a good pen, but it has a very unique nib. Very flexible. Uh, the only change I would make is I'd love to have this nib in a fine. But, you know, since I got this many hundreds of dollars cheaper than your typical M1000, I'm not going to complain too much. So, another ink I'm using up. Noodlers, Black Swan. in Australian Roses. Uh, an ink I like very much. I'd sure love to get some suggestions about what I could replace it with. Uh, has that dark shading, just a very nice color. All in all, a really attractive ink. And this is from before he had his trouble with the dye changed, and he's like, oh, shoot. And uh, I guess didn't catch it till people started complaining that, um, this doesn't look like Black Swan and Australian Roses. So I don't know if he ever got it back to how it was. I haven't bought any. So this is my Visconti Homo Sapiens, another pen, if I remember right, that has three squirrels beside it. I'll talk about the squirrels here at the end. 
One fun thing with this one, now, for a long time, Visconti was using palladium nibs. This is one. And now they've gone back to using gold nibs. So I don't even know if you can get a palladium nib from them anymore. But this one is a medium palladium nib. Another Noodler's Ink that I'm trying to use up. This one's very close to being used up. Same traits, very shading. I don't like it quite as well, but I do like it. Uh, I think the Australian Roses has better weather. They also have the Outback, which I'm weird enough. That's the part of Australia I'd really love to see. And I'd like to see the Barrier Reef, of course, but uh, I really want to see the Outback of Australia. Probably looks like a lot like North Dakota. Maybe drier. All right, so there we go. My final pen for today. I kind of picked it up on a lark out of my to trade pile. Um, to trade slash sell. Not that it's a bad pen, but uh, I don't know. I just lost interest in it. So this is a Visconti Mirage. A medium steel nib and the ink in it. I showed you a couple of weeks ago this awful heart-shaped bottle that I couldn't fit a pen in, including this one. And I really wanted to put this ink in this pen because it was either this or Private Reserve Tanzanite. And longtime viewers of the channel know what happened the last time I put Private Reserve Tanzanite in this pen. But anyway, I uh, it's now thanks to some viewer suggestions. I did the obvious. I poured the rest of the ink into an Ackermann bottle. So this is Girban Blue Myosotis, which is apparently the French name for the flower that in English we know as the Forget-Me-Not. Now I remember them as being a brighter shade of blue, but I'm also not French. Who knows what the French version looks like? Well, probably French people do. So there is that. Oh, now I'm going to get myself in trouble again. But anyway, those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. I Actually, uh, as I said, I've been using that Sailor Regulus as my daily writer all week. I... Uh, Grew to respect it more, especially with the ink I have in it. Um, but it's going on my... It's so unique looking, so this is hard. But it, it's, it's going in my collection of pens that I'm going to work on say, trading or selling. So uh, stay tuned eventually for uh, a revisit to the pen. I have it filmed. I just have to put it together and, you know, upload it. But... Uh, in the meantime, I guess you can look at my earlier impression of it, which is linked down in the video description. So, enough of that. <laughs> so here's what's been going on. As you probably realize, I'm a science, sometimes math, sometimes computer science teacher in a rural school in southwestern North Dakota. Uh, my school's had an exciting time lately. One of the exciting things, our girls' basketball team... Made it through district championships, made it through regional championships, and went on to state championships. And, you know, eventually they took fourth. But uh, this is the second year in a row they've made it to state, and yeah, a lot of excitement there. Of course, in the meantime, I'm getting ready for my own science Olympiad, so I didn't go to state, I didn't go to regionals, I uh, was not going to pay to go to districts, so I... Uh, Plus, I had practice during several of the district games. So, um, Then our boys, <clears throat> kind of concurrently, but it, uh, they're two weeks later, our boys made it through district championships, made it through regional championships, 
And, uh, yeah, they went on to state, which they are playing at. Today's the last day of state championships. So they, uh, won the first game against a private school in Minot. The second game, which was against one of the schools I used to teach at, uh, they lost 63-61. to And we'll see how they do today. So, uh, yeah, exciting stuff there. Now, as for me, because uh, this is all about me, <laughs> that's my channel, um, I, of course, am a Science Olympiad coach. People don't get as excited about Science Olympiad as they do about basketball, because, you know, God forbid anybody gets excited about science, but my Science Olympiad team had its regional meet Thursday this week, the 14th, and on... Uh, because of all the state basketball stuff, I spent a lot of time rearranging my team because I had a lot of boys basketball players on my team. Because I originally had two high school teams that I was going to take to regionals. And whoops, never mind. Um, I was down to one. I lost uh, some more kids because, yeah, our parents are going to stay, so I got to go. and uh, Or they just wanted to go. Um so my junior high team was reduced down to three people. My high school team was reduced down to 13, so I had to consolidate it into a single team and reassign events and redistribute events, and uh, <clears throat> it was not fun. But we got it, so we went to Regional Science Olympiad on Thursday. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect, but we pulled out a... The junior high team took home four medals, so I'm proud of them. You know, between three kids, they got four medals, so I think that's good. The high school team also got four medals, but the high school team was able to participate in all of the events, unlike the junior high team. So the high school team, because they participated in all the events, was able to pull out a fifth place win, which fifth place goes to state. So, uh, happy about that. Now it means more work, but uh, still happy about it, I guess. So we will be going to state. Um, state sci So regional science Olympiad for us is held on the Dickinson State University campus. Uh, state science Olympiad is always held in Fargo at the NDSU, North Dakota State University campus. Uh, they're pretty much the only place able to host something like that and that's going to be a, a long Saturday <laughs> we'll we'll drive there on Friday because that's about a six hour trip from where I live and uh, we'll do the event all day Saturday and then Saturday night we will drive back for a really late arrival here late Saturday night hopefully not Sunday morning and uh have to eat somewhere along the way, so I'll have to figure all that out. i got to reserve motel rooms, uh, figure out... I always try to do an educational stop of some kind on the way to Fargo, partly as a leg stretcher, partly as a... You know, this is a chance for them to see something that they don't normally see. So I want to do that, too. I am not sure what. I know Microsoft used to offer tours of their facility. I That's one option I'm considering. There's a flight museum... Uh, there, there's a lot of things either on the way to Fargo or in Fargo that could be done. As nice as the weather has been, I am tempted to stop also in Valley City because Valley City has a a park that's arranged, uh, sadly not on the day of state competition, but it's designed so that certain shadows are cast in certain ways on the solstices or the equinoxes. has all the planets laid out to scale. And it's got a nice view of Valley City, which I've shared this before um, in video form. So I'll have to try to remember to put the link down below in the video description. But anyway, so uh, yeah, we're going to state. We're going to state. <laughs> so since I will be going to state and things are not likely to slow down in all of April, I am going to cheat on my pens in use and start filming them on Sunday, which probably I should be doing anyway. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of batch filming Sunday. I, I always promise myself one day off a week 
uh, from my job type stuff. So I'm not going to correct papers. I'm not going to think about school that day. And I usually do it on Sunday. Sometimes I do it on Saturday, like if I want to go to Black Hills or something. But uh, anyway, I don't think any Black... Okay, actually, there is a Black Hills trip in there in the middle. So, was it March 31st? Somewhere around there is Easter. And I do have two nights planned in the Black Hills. I'm going to stay in the Town Hall Inn in Leeds, South Dakota. Uh, Easter Day, I'll be back here. Easter Monday, I'll be back here. <laughs> Probably Easter Monday, I'll be doing some schoolwork. But anyway, I... Uh, yeah, maybe Easter. Who knows? We'll see which one has the worst weather. Um, but anyway, yeah, another grind till April 20th. And then after that, it's all over because uh, there is a national competition. I doubt we will get there. I mean, it could happen, but it's unlikely. And uh looks like it's in Pasadena, California at the Caltech campus, which is exciting. That would be an incentive, except it's virtual so uh in the past my team has you know during the covid years my team has made it to state oh and it's going to be a virtual competition this year so no trip to fargo no educational tour just sit in our little town and take tests on a computer and for the build events they got interviewed by like zoom or something Yay! So, uh, and I realize it's a financial hardship to go to nationals. Like, if we made it to nationals in Pasadena, California, we just wouldn't go because we couldn't afford it. But that's still kind of depressing to say. It's it's virtual. <laughs> so, anyway, this baby that you can barely see here... Um, one of the good things that came out of virtual for me, teaching virtually and all that, is I pulled my typewriter out of my basement that had languished for like 20 years and discovered I really like typing on a typewriter. And I own four of them. This is one of them. So I got to do a video on this baby someday. It's an Underwood. I think it's an Underwood SX. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, I'm starting to babble now. <laughs> so I... I have no idea where the footage is going to come from that's going to take you out during the outro. I'll try to find some drive. Maybe, since we're going to state, maybe I'll find some drive in Fargo. <laughs> Sorry. Fargo is... I like Broadway in Fargo, which the kids won't get to go there. That's basically Fargo's main street. Um, the old neighborhood around Broadway in the very oldest part of Fargo is nice. All the housing developments, the strip malls, the strodes. That's what so much of Fargo is now and I <laughs> don't like it. So yeah, you couldn't pay me to live in Fargo. You know, when I think about, Oh, do I want to live somewhere bigger? It's not Fargo. So Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And <laughs> if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, let's hope this filming on Sunday works. And, uh, you know, April 20th, we'll find out how state goes. I want to thank you all for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.